Hey there! Welcome to What a Feminist Looks Like, a channel where I discuss the relationship between fashion and feminism. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the corset. A corset was a undergarment that mainly women wore underneath their clothing, so that way they would appear thinner and obtain that kind of hourglass figure that women have to consistently have as a beauty standard. So what it did is it made your waist appear rather thin and your, your breasts full and your hips wide. The reason for this is that you would look like you could have a lot of children because of your wide hips. So this corset I'm wearing is a replica and it has snaps in the front and is then laced in the back. You can see that it is quite tight on the back. When I wore this I lost about two to three inches off my waist. It was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Now traditionally the type of women that wore these corsets were middle to upper class. Corsets became fashionable around the late renaissance period and into the 20th century. So what it did in its fashion, it didn't like consistently stay through fashion, it kind of had like an up and down kind of cycle, so it was into fashion and out of fashion and into fashion and out of fashion. And then it would go in this up and down cycle until about the 20th century when it kind of just petered out. But you can still today see women wearing corsets, it's just worn on the outside of their clothing rather underneath their clothing. So the corset can be seen in a lot of actual pop culture. Mm. <sighs> Try again, Mammy. Twenty inches. Twenty inches. I've grown as big as Aunt Pity. You simply gotta make it eighteen and a half again, Mammy. Another movie that it is seen in is a recent Snow White movie called Mirror Mirror. It stars Julia Roberts. It just doesn't fit. Well, your you husband. must have shrunk it. Cinch me up. Yeah! <laughs> I knew I was the same size. This is also a way that women would have to get into a corset. They would have to use an actual machine. <laughs> the broader connection to the dress reform movement, which I know you have all been waiting for. The corset and the dress reform movement were connected because feminists in the dress reform movement, or dress reformers as they were called also, wanted to get rid of the corset completely. They didn't want women to wear them because they believed they made them into sex objects and something to be admired and not someone to actually interact with. And that's why bloomers are also associated with the dress reform movement because bloomers kind of got rid of the corset. They wanted, they had this free clothing idea and it's loose, it's comfortable, easy to walk around in, do chores in. And this is why corsets were also part of the broader dress reform movement. So for some context, according to the CDC, the average waist size is 37.5 inches. According to the International Diabetes Federation and the American Heart Association, the range for abdominal obesity to begin is between 31 to 35 inches. So I know that women, when they try to get into corsets either today or back in the dress reform movement, they would, an often enough number would be the early 20s to the um, late teens. So around 20 to 18 inches is, and the world record is for the smallest waist in a living person is currently held by a woman named Kathy Zhang. Her waist size is 15 inches. <laughs> okay, corset 101. Reasons that corsets were not exactly the greatest thing in the world. Reason one, it made women into objects. And this made them see something to be admired and not someone to actually interact with and have a place in society. Reason two, the corset puts forward this unattainable beauty standard of having an hourglass figure. Because the corset has gone has been part of fashion for so long, this beauty standard has been one that women have internalized. And it makes women have to think that they have to have a skinny waist, big boobs, and big hips. And this isn't true at all. And it's consistently been part of our media. If you look at any any Disney princess, like the most recent um, Frozen, they all still have this beauty standard of big hips, small waist, very, very small waist, and big hips. And it makes girls think that they need to have this standard too. And corsets have contributed to this because they have made women think this and they've been around for so long. The third reason that corsets aren't exactly the best is that they cause a significant amount of health problems within women and young girls. Valerie Steele in her book, A 
Corsets of Cultural History, recounts her interactions with cardiologist Dr. Lynn Puchus, who spent a year at the Fashion Institute of Technology, went back on and investigated old documents of, issue, of medical issues that were associated with corsetry, and, the, and their findings generally were that it caused some organ damage and that it did cause permanent rib damage if you started doing corsetry from a young age, and it does inhibit your lung capacity. The modern day ways that corsets are worn are in three ways. The first is the traditional slash historical way. Another is for, is for just sex and sexual purposes. And then another one is for dieting. And with that, we are done the corset. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section below. I think that you should subscribe to this channel and also watch my previous videos. I'm Bronwyn and this is what a feminist looks like.